Can you guys see me now? I don't know what happened there. Yes, sir. It's your visible. Okay, perfect. Could you kindly share the presentation? There we go. Perfect. Excellent. So, can you guys see the presentation now and hear us uh, correctly? Yeah, that we're seeing everything fine and great. I think we can begin. Excellent. So, welcome to One is Two X. I'm really glad that you guys are joining us today. Um, we are going to be having a discussion surrounding BIM. This webinar is a part of a series where we'll be having different experts and leaders from the industry join us and discuss topics surrounding BIM that will help you understand everything about this emerging market in the industry. So before we begin, I would like to know a little bit about the people that are joining us today in this session. So I would really love for you two guys to open up your cameras and let me know in the chat below which part of uh, India are you joining us or if you're part of another country, let me know where are you watching us from. So let me begin with our uh, introduction of today. My name is Arad Jaques. I am an architect and BIM coordinator. I work currently in Formacion Arco, which is a startup that is meant to uh, bring education and training to the professionals of the construction industry here in Mexico. We collaborate heavily with institutions and other companies that need this training in the industry. I studied in the Instituto Tecnológico Durango here in Mexico, and I'm part also of the One is Two X team. And today is also joining us a person who is well acquainted with our uh, team and our pro uh, products and services in the team, which is Tuchar, Tuchar sorry, Chaudhary. So can you introduce yourself, please, Tushar? Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Tushar here. I'm currently working at Populous. It's an <clears throat> MNC which specializes in sports architecture and they extensively work in Revit as well as various aspects of BIM, like in terms of documentation as well as using Dynamo for, you know, speeding up the process and stuff like that, as well as I'm a part of one 2 x team and extensively teaching and, you know, <clears throat> working on course module and enhancing the content and see what we can teach and what we cannot. And I studied at SPA Bhopal and I'm an architect. Excellent. Thank you, Tushar. So before we begin, I would like to explain quickly the dynamic of this webinar. We are um, going to have this quick discussion. And then at the end of the webinar, we'll be opening the floor for any questions and opinions from you guys. So at the end of the webinar, at the end of the discussion, the team from One is 2X will be reaching out to you to make sure that none of your questions go unanswered, all right? So let's begin by understanding the very first question and the most essential thing. What is BIM? So, um, Tushar, can you break it down for us from your experience and your point of view? What is BIM? Uh, so I think you can start by understanding the basic definition of it, that is building information modeling. And most of the people that I've seen or the learners that I've interacted till now, they think that BIM is about just, you know, modeling stuff and knowing like learning Revit or learning ARCHICAD in terms of architecture or learning ETAP for structural modeling as well as, you know, Tecla or some other software which is being used for modeling MEP or <clears throat> structural or civil thing, but BIM is much more than all that. Did we lost Arath again? Can you guys Hello. hear me again? Yeah, I think you had some internet glitch again. Yeah, I don't know what happened there again, but I'm yeah. apologies. So, so uh, I was saying, can you share us uh, from your experience and your point of view, what is BIM? Yeah, I was just telling them how we, we can start with it. So BIM is about building information modeling. And so we'll break down this in a way that first, when you come, you do start any project, what you do, you start visualizing the concept. 
and from that concept you get to a basic model and some people this understand that dream is up to that only like as soon as you develop the model which contains all the wall door windows as well as floor ceiling and everything that is not bim that is just a modeling part of bim the bim is much more than that it is more about getting information out of that model in terms of you know getting the schedules getting the building quantity even <clears throat> knowing what type of material you will be using on a wall what type of tiles you will be using what type of lighting fixture will be used in your model or in the design that you are making or as well as what type of glazing will be used the solar analysis the sustainability part of it even the how you can make your construction process efficient like it it contains a variety of things not just modeling so when we talk about beam or when we talk about this we have to be very particular about that we are not just talking about how to do modeling in revit or archicad or any other software we need to understand much more than that so we teach here in a way that we make you understand how to get a information out of something which is a very crucial part excellent and yeah i think also another thing that maybe will help people understand what bim is about is that it is a process it's a methodology right it's not yeah. just a software it's not uh yeah. like a website that you go to it's a process that is run by the people who are behind the projects and i mean we we always say this but uh bim is not in, like making the wheel we're not like discovering fire here we're doing things that we already did in the industry, but with the help of technology to expedite the processes. So I think that um, we should be able to understand that BIM is more about the people and the processes instead of the software and uh, like the, the BIM terminologies, right? Exactly. So now well, let's talk about what are the benefits that can be derived from BIM? Because we know now what is you know BIM is a process, but um, let's talk about why it's being so popular and what we can get out of it. So can you tell us to shout out from your experience again, what has been one of the things that you have noticed that are some of the benefits of BIM? So I think let's just start with a conversation that it makes the process much more efficient than it was. 10 year or 15 years ago, like in terms of, let's just take a basic example and understand things from example. So you're doing a building and you made the plan of a ground floor and a first floor. And the building contains say 12 to 15 floors. Now you want to align the shaft on all the floors. <laughs> so that is, that is where all this information comes in. Like when information start to overlap on CAD. I'm just talking about shaft here, but in terms of when you get an input from structure, when you get an input from MEP, as well as HVAC and several other consultants, and you have to overlay all that information. And you have to see either whether your pipes are clashing with your <clears throat> beam or whether your ducts are going into your pipe or are they at the right location or not. It, it, it was really, you know, difficult and time taking when it has to be done on a 2d environment and when the things become start to become 3d and you start to get information out of things the process become a little bit more efficient but this is just about modeling but at the same time when you put information in your model you get the lifespan of your building you get the heating analysis of your building that makes the HVAC lo load better. That makes the plumbing load better. That makes the mechanical load better of the building. So it's more about, you know, getting an information out of what you have model or what you are doing. So I think it's from my side. Excellent. Just yeah. So we can say that the workflows become more efficient, right? Like the, our work yeah. becomes more intelligent. So, yeah, um, and uh, yeah, even adding to that, like it, it really became easier to work on BIM environment when the COVID happened. Like it gets really difficult to you know coordinate with consultants and everything. But at the similar time, when you work on BIM environment, you know, and like you can sit in India and you can work with consultants that are working in Hong Kong. Like on a project, I was this was building that 
been built in Hakusan, that's a city in Japan currently. And I was extensively working on that. And that building just got built in like six, seven months because we documented each and every part of it. We knew that this duct will be of this size and everything got prefabricated because of all the information we gathered and collected from all the consultants. And the process happened globally. Like we don't need to be in India or we don't need to be in Hong Kong or USA to just coordinate with each other. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that. And yeah, I mean, I guess that the, the our audience uh, would have to understand that BIM in general is about making processes easier, more intelligent, and exploit really the technology that we have, right? Um, like you said, the estimation becomes faster, coordination becomes easier with us, like versus traditional uh, ways of coordinating, which are, you know, like through email or WhatsApp, which, I mean, yeah. we all have met people who do that. Um, basically here, for example, in Mexico, the entire construction industry relies on Outlook and WhatsApp. So it gets to be a little bit complicated there because when you have an issue, like a change in the project, you have to first tell them that there was a change and then come back and change it. And then they know it and, you know, it becomes a whole mess. So the, the main benefits of BIM are the optimizations of collaboration, of coordination, and other challenges that, uh, for example, CAD alone hasn't been able to address, right? So now let's talk about like a, a grander perspective of BIM. And let's talk about what is happening in the industry right now surrounding BIM. Again, from your experience in India and from the other uh, places in the world and companies that you have been able to collaborate with, what do you think is happening right now? Uh, so I'll, I'll start taking the example of India because I'm residing here and I'm majorly working on Indian projects and I've worked on several international projects. So as India is rapidly growing and it's a developing country and not yet developed, so there are a lot of development that is happening. And to cater all those needs, we need process, processes that are way too much faster and efficient. Like even at this point, I was just reading some articles, even the Indian government has made it mandatory now that we have to have Revit or any other BIM modeling software if we want to bid for government projects. Because they are also trying to understand that this thing is really needed in the industry because it makes the process much more faster than it was before. As say, like just giving an example, yesterday we have, we just got a call from our consultant that we are making your DBR and we need, <clears throat> we need the area of the green on your landscape. Imagine if it was on CAD and the la that landscape yeah. was made entirely made with, you know, poly lines and splines and <laughs> it got mounts and everything. And we have to calculate the surface area and I, imagine how, Arad, will you imagine how much time would have, it would have taken me to do it. So yeah. it just took me like three or four seconds after that call to tell them the area. And that's it because everything is coordinated. Like we are coordinated, we are much more efficiently coordinated with our landscape designer who is extensively working on our models. We are coordinated with our HVAC consultant and all other consultants. That is the positive side of it. Like it's, it's coming, but the problem is as soon as we take out drawings and the drawings go in the field, the contractors yeah. yet to understand the meaning or importance of why we need to send the drawings that are in 3D environment and that contains much more than just a drafted plan. Because like what happened, say, during my college only, our college was getting built, like our academic, the new academic block was coming up. And what happened, due to some error by IIT Bombay, <laughs> the soil report was wrong. And we yeah. planned the base, we planned the auditorium on the basement but the basement turned out to be made out of completely basalt. So the mm. project cost got increased by say five to six crore just to dig up the yeah. basalt. So <laughs> such problems happen on site when you, you know, when there's a lack of coordination, yeah, yeah. like there's a lack of modeling of contours, there's a lack of modeling of your site and the stuff like that. So India is adapting BIM, but the process is a little bit slow, but I think in coming one or two years, it will get really, really fast because of all the things that are happening. 
as well as i will say i will have to say this the coming up of this ai and chat gpt is has become a boom in in the industry and people are already yeah. trying like even in populous you are trying to write and get our renders done from chat gpt and yeah. you will be surprised you know the results are astonishing like like really great results that we got yeah i think that in general the 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 most interesting things are happening in the developing countries right like because we have yeah. i mean lack of of maybe for example government interest and so we have to go in and make it on you know how we can for example yeah. here in mexico we don't have yet a bim standard but given that chile is the only country in latin america who does have a bim standard we usually go and look after what they're doing and i mean chile is probably the most advanced country in the region when it comes to bim but here we're also doing our efforts right and and talking about the experience and like the perspective of what's happening yeah. in bim here in mexico um i think that also the one of the biggest uh challenges that we have currently is the education and the awareness of bim right because many people still believe that bim is about revit or that is like a, a software um and am i audible yeah yeah you are doing it oh yeah yeah i don't know what happened there so yeah like uh there's still like many misconceptions surrounding it so Um, I guess that in general, we could say that it's, it's still going, like it's it's still going on there, but there are already countries who have it set for a lot of years now. For example, Scandinavian countries have it since 2002. Uh, the UK has been doing it since 2007, stuff like that. Of course, the United States, Hong Kong, Singapore, and of course, like uh, emerging leaders like China and the UAE, right? So uh, understanding that where are we stepping now or where are we standing in BIM, we can also talk about what um careers or what opportunities can we look into our industry uh, with you know this emerging market in mean so what do you think is the the uh career opportunities that will sprung up in the next few years for the people who are about to become like bim uh acquainted uh yeah i think that's a, that's really a great question to ask so i will talk about my personal experience and my career so i got graduated like say two years one and a half year ago and knowing revit and knowing the process of bim has really really boosted my career like it it served as a catalyst the and the catalyst was so fast that <laughs> i was from zero to say 70 or 80 I just like in month or so because I had a lot of knowledge about how things are happening. I had a lot of knowledge about a AEC construction cloud. I had a lot of knowledge about BIM three sixty, and this and there is lack of people who has this expertise in field. So I have been approached by firms from London. I have been approached by firms from Hong Kong to work, but I plan to stay in India for some time. So I am working with a MNC only currently. That is Populous, and it's also a very large company that that. Uh, has work has project i think worldwide even you will be surprised to know the narendra modi stadium was done by populous only and one of the largest bim project that we say kitech is also being done by populous and even the autodesk personally worked with populous to understand that how they can make the process efficient when the files are so big and when there are almost 200 to 250 people working on a single file so in terms of india we are adapting things and when things come you know like this um and there's a lack of skilled people in that field so it's the right time to learn this this skill this is an important skill to have if you are an architect or a civil engineer so this will boost up your career i'll say like 150 or yeah. 200 times yeah 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 totally definitely And I think also another another uh, advantage that we have with BIM is already what we mentioned, right? Like the coordination and being able to work with people without having them in the same office. Yeah. And I think we all saw it on the pandemic, right? Like we were able to work yeah. on on like distance with people from other countries. Like for example, right now, I'm able to to speak with you guys who mostly are from India, but I'm here in Mexico, so. 
And we are able to talk about this um, methodology. We're able to delve into this without really having to be in the same geographical point. And also, like you mentioned, it's an emerging market. So there's going to be yeah. a lot of opportunities sprunging up. And I mean, I think that that we say also that BIM is the future, but I think that is already the present, right? And yeah. So, so I think with all the things coming up and people getting aware about sustainability and mm -hmm. energy efficient building, it's it's really important to know the process. It's it's it gets really important if you're an architect. It's important to understand this process because this will get standardized very soon. And when that happened, you will find yourself lagging the skill. And <clears throat> then at that time, it, it's going to take you another year to get at that stage. So why not right now? Just you have to yeah. learn something. Why not right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's also very important what you mentioned, because I mean, I've seen it with my own practice. Um, having the awareness that you can upskill before having the need to upskill like right in your face, it's, it's going to yeah. help you a lot because I've had... Yeah. People like tell me to uh, basically asking me to have a, a Revit speed run course because they <laughs> say they knew Revit on an interview on Monday and on Friday they were going to get tested. So, I mean, yeah, I think that one of the, the best things we can do for our career is in advance, you know, look for opportunities, learn about stuff without having us, you know, like uh, the need for to know about BIM or Revit chasing, right? So, Coming back to, to a couple of, of minutes ago, when we're talking about why there is like no much awareness or the state of BIM currently, um, if it's, you know, so beneficial like we mentioned, if it's so uh, potentially benefiting for our careers, then why isn't more people uh, learning it? Uh, is it difficult to learn? From your experience, do you think that it was a difficult path? I think I think it's the easiest thing that a person can learn. You just have to be aware and you just know you just have to have the right path. That's all that's all it takes. And it's just gonna if say a person needs to understand all aspects of BIM and wanna become an expert in it. What I'll say is they have to spend knowing or learning about it, say one or one and a half hour a day for like four to five months. That's all. And, and I, I will guarantee you, you will get perfect in it. You will get like super fine and super great and super fast by knowing all the process and everything. It's, I think it's one of the easiest thing that I have learned. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think that um, the, the main reason why there is not so many people so far, I mean, at least in developing countries, right? Um, like we mentioned, is because there isn't really a uh, real effort and interest by either education institutions or the government exactly. to implement it. Although there are already efforts, for example, here in Mexico, there's already uh, an investigation led by the Federal Bureau of, of Projects that is aiming to implement BIM. Um, and I mean, I guess it's something that we've always faced, right? Like the 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 avoidance of public institutions to update students and stuff like that. Exactly. I think, and like, Arad, I'll just, yeah. I'll just add one thing. <laughs> the one important thing, the curriculum that India, Indian architecture colleges right now are following are, are almost 20 year old. It does not take into consideration that things have been advanced yeah. and we need to advance. We need to upskill ourselves with that process. Otherwise we will lag behind. Mm -hmm. We will, we will just become draftsmen and we will not be anything else. We have to have skill to understand all the process. Like if you imagine if you start doing a solar analysis without any software, like it used to have in old days, it's going to take you say, one, one month or I'll say 15 days to do that, to understand, yeah. to gather around data and do everything. Yeah, but yeah. at the same time, other person who has expertise in all that is going to just do it in like one or two hours. So who will, who will someone prefer? The person who is doing the time is value. It's my the time is value. It's money. It's everything. The time in today's world is, I think, the most important resource a person can have. And if you are fast in what you do, you will be wanted by everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that uh, I mean, speaking about India specifically, I am aware that there are already projects that have implemented BIM, like the the Nagpur yeah. uh, Metro Rail. 
project and i think that that has served as a kickstart to like yeah make people aware right like the bill yeah. is not just a, a fad or something like that but actually a mm. uh, thing that has come to to revolutionize the industry and also another thing that i would like to add in this conversation about why is it so difficult or why isn't people aware it's also because i mean I can uh, speak, of course, from my experience here, but uh, many people still have this fear of, you know, updating themselves, like either because they don't want to to fail at the first try or something like that. But I think that one of the best things that we can do as professionals is just try new things, learn and, and keep constantly educating ourselves because uh, our industry, like many others, is ever changing. And we cannot exactly. just stay with the procedures that we're doing in the 80s or stuff like that, right? Like, um, I mean, in the 80s, when AutoCAD came out, everybody was like crazy about it. But there were still people who, I mean, till this day, put like a hand drawing on the pedestal, right? Like the, the ultimate thing. <laughs> and I mean, yeah, we can understand that it's helpful to like uh, be creative, stuff like that. But I mean, with the speed of the world that we have right now, like the, the current state of our world, I think that it's uh, very important for us to update our skills, our technology. And I mean, why not right now? I mean, we have everything at our hands currently. Exactly. Right? Yeah. I think it's just not even about architecture or our industry. It's about every industry. You have to upskill yourself with time. Otherwise, yeah. you will lag behind. Like, whatever you are doing you have to upskill you have to read you have to study you have to you have to be you have to be aware of what's happening around you at least if you don't yeah. want to learn it you have to be at least aware like this, this these are the changes that had happened and these are the things that i need to upskill or i like so that you mm. are at least prepared to face the world yeah yeah totally and the other day i was listening to to a podcast that uh mentioned something interesting that said that the BIM is destroying the, the architecture industry. Um, and I think that also another, another factor that might be contributing to people not being aware of BIM um, is the fact that there's still many misconceptions around it, right? Like, I, I'm sure that we've all seen like job postings on LinkedIn and stuff like that. They are calling for BIM architects or stuff like that. But in reality, what they mean is that they just want somebody to draw in Revit. Like they, they don't really care about like the BIM stuff, right? Like they only care about Revit and stuff like that. Yeah. And um, I guess it's also in our responsibility as professionals to make people aware of the new advancements. And um, I think, I mean, I guess people in the audience will also be be agreeing that um, this kind of like fake information surrounding the construction has always existed. But uh, I mean, we have access to information like ever before in history. So why not make use of that and, you know, impulse our careers, right? Exactly. I think that that's really important. It, I think people still confuse Revit with BIM. Like, it's just knowing Revit is not knowing BIM. BIM is much yeah. more than Revit. It's not a software. It's a knowledge. Yeah. It's like learning a language. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, and actually, that's, very, that's a very interesting analogy because, um, like, in order to work with BIM, like, for example, if I didn't know English, I would have to be using like translator or something like that in order to communicate with you guys, right? But with BIM, we're able to even work without, like I said, being in the same place, even speaking the same language, because the um, the way that we manage BIM, the way that we collaborate, the way that we organize and, and coordinate allows us to do that, right? So yeah, talking about, you know, the the... Like once we talk about what's the main challenges, what the main status of the industry, at least from our ex experience here in Mexico and over there in India, what's um, the way that architects and engineers who wish 
to learn about them and fast track their career growth, how can they start? What do you think would be the best first step for people to take in order to delve into this sector? I think the first step, I'll say I, I'll be a little uh, old school about it. The first step is to get your fear out that you cannot yeah. learn. You can learn everything. You just have to put your mind and energy in them. And then the next yeah. step is you have to find the right path, the right channel where you, you will be understanding what is BIM and what is the importance of Revit or Archicad in BIM. What is the importance of Point Cloud or BIM 360? How you can coordinate with several softwares? Like so, all this is one process which need to be break down into several subheads, and you need to like start with the first head and reach the end. You cannot just start with like say I learn BIM 360 first, then I learn Revit. That cannot happen. You have to be yeah. a little bit you know efficient in a ma manner and have to find a way. So that you get a right path, a right spine yeah. that you can join. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think that the a very th important thing that you mentioned was, you know, kicking out the fear out, right? Because, yeah. Um, I mean, for example, in, in my experience with the people we help teach, uh, a, a common occurrence is that they always mention that they didn't want to get into a course because they, they thought it's going to be too, like, late is going to take a lot of time or they didn't know how to start on their own. And in my experience as a, as a architect as well, for example, I learned Revit on my own, but I... Looking back, I wish I would have had like a, a resource in order to, to guide me, you know, and, and exactly help me understand think, things better. I'll say the same, Arun, because uh, yeah. it took like there was things that I've learned wrong. And while coming in this way, I, I realized that, oh, this was not supposed to be done this way. Yeah. And yeah, there's always a better way to do it. So yeah, 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 you have to have a right guidance. Yeah. And I mean, I, I guess it's, it's also like the experiences, you know, like eventful, I guess. But talking right now, like in the industry, uh, like you said, we realize that we have maybe doing things wrong or that we have uh, committed like errors in our work and stuff like that. But um, with the help of either a course or a mentor, I think we can, you know, expedite this process and be able to understand things much better from the experience and the knowledge of somebody who is already well acquainted with industry, with the methodology. So now talking about how we can start, we also at one is to x we have the effort to maintain this spirit of knowledge, of learning, of continuous upskilling with the industry, not only with the professionals of India, but from around the world and delving and reaching many people from across the planet. I mean, and I can say it right now, um, here, for example, in Mexico, we are aware of the course. I know that there's people from all over India, from the Middle East, from Africa, from Europe. And uh, I would recommend you guys to really delve into our um, effort, which is this BIM professional course, which is a 24 week comprehensive online course that has BIM mentors from all across the world and the professionals that, that lead in the BIM industry and work at top tier firms like the Levi Partnership, UN Studio, AM Arc Studio, Cooper Carey, Prota, RSP, BNH Architects, and many more. These are architects from all over the world. They're architects from, they're working in Hong Kong, in Turkey, in the UK, in India, in the UAE. So, I mean, the, the quality and the amount of information and expertise that our mentors are able to transmit to the learners is gigantic. And I mean, you and I are both part of this course as uh, industry guides. And I think that um, 
we've both seen the the amount of growth people have through the course like from the yeah. beginning where they know nothing about I think that we can we can talk about not the people's growth we can talk about our growth only like we have grown from yeah. <laughs> something yeah. to something yeah. Yeah, yeah while while just being a part of course yeah 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 um i mean i yeah i mean from the beginning of of you know like uh understanding bim to now i think we have been able to have a comprehensive uh knowledge of the industry of how bim works how it is applied in real life and yeah i mean our uh effort which is this bim professional course like i mentioned it has mentors from all over the world and you'll be able to master seven plus bim software and industry workflows and at the very end, we'll be able to work on a live project that is based on Riva uh, structure to not let like everything on theory, right? Like we are also applying this learning onto the actual projects that will help you understand even more how do we work in the BIM industry. And one of the best things about this course is that we have a placement assistance to land jobs in these top tier uh, leading firms. Because of course it's important to not leave um, everything in the table and like forget about like, oh yeah, I learned about it, but whatever. And it's important for us to actually apply that. So can you give us like your experience on uh, what has been working with the BIM professional course uh, to Sharp? I think, yeah. So first of all, I think, it, it really helped me upskill myself. I, I'll, I'll say that. So I'll start yeah. with that. So the intent of the course is we have strategically by talking to several professionals in industry, divided our course into several modules. And how we deliver thing is we have divided the modeling part in one module. We have divided the documentation part in one module. And all the parts have been taught by different mentors. So how that help is the person who is has expertise in modeling is going to teach you modeling. The person who has expertise in documentation is going to teach you documentation. A person who has expertise in parametric design and dynamo and the scripting software is going to teach you those. So I think that's something gives us a little bit, makes our course a little bit different from any other course that is available online because we have experts from in all the fields and we just does not give you guys like one mentor who is going to teach you everything and interact with you. We have people who are from all around the globe and have experience of all type of construction or all type of design development or all type of advanced tools that are being developed. So I think that's something that's really great about it. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, this is uh, the webinar is to, to make you guys aware of, of uh, what really is happening with BIM to also, you know, make you understand uh, what is like the, the current state of it, like what is the main challenges that we are facing. And of course, this effort that we are doing with a multidisciplinary team from all over the world in order to upskill the industry. And of course, you know, make use of all the technologies. So yeah, I think we are- as well as the, other... uh, yeah, just just yeah. one last one. As well as Arat, I think uh, we have people from all the big firms, and they know what these sort of firms expect when you send your CV or portfolio. So they're also mm. gonna help you as angel mentors to figure out how you can you know enhance your portfolio and develop in develop it in a way that a person a great firm or a good firm can easily hire you, or at least you will get shortlisted for interviews. Mm. Absolutely. Perfect. So we're reaching the end of the webinar, but before we finish, we would like to hear from you guys uh, if you have any questions. So please raise your hand and let us know in the chat your questions. Um, and uh, Tasawar, are we able to have them open their mics or uh, can they do it through the chat? Yes, um, I'm allowing Mohammed Hamza to unmute and ask his question. Mohammed Hamza, could you go ahead, please? Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, my question is, I'm a fresh graduate 
I am graduated six months ago, and I want to start my career in BIM. In BIM. So, sir, what will be the very first step from which I took a start, and then go step by step? Thank you. Thank you, Mahadan. You wanna go ahead, Tushar? I uh, I think I think this is this question will be quite a bit related to me. I and I also am a fresh graduate. And I have started my I have started learning BIM or uh, the process since my fourth or third year, and it took me like six seven months to expertise in it. And then you know you need to get to know professionals so that they can upskill you. They can you know enhance the or fast track the process of letting you know which firm you can apply in, what are your interests, and what are the things that you like and you don't like. So I think the first step for you, Mohammed, will be figuring it out, like what or how you want to learn, and whether or not you want to learn it. And the next step is you have to find a right and a perfect course for yourself, in which you can start learning things. And I think at during that time or during the learning through the course or through yourself, if you want to do it yourself, you will realize that these type of firms or these are the firms that you can shortlist and apply for. And then it's just very simple. You have to make a portfolio and apply. It's just it. It's not a difficult thing. It's just you have to be clear what your goals are. Yeah, absolutely. And also adding up to that, I think that um, a big thing would be to get acquainted in the industry by either, like Tushar said, meeting professionals that already know about them or that can like guide you and mentor you through the processes. In my experience, um, it was through knowing about BIM, learning, you know, developing my skills, and then reaching out to companies that I see are doing big projects and that might be, you know, uh, needing or will benefit from implementing BIM. And that's what I did. I mean, I literally reached out to companies that were building like this uh, big commercial uh, project. And that's how I got my first jobs in BIM. Like I, I went there, I pitched the, the methodology and what the benefits are for them. And I, of course, like some of them ask for demonstrations, stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, I think that the very first step that you have to take, Muhammad, would be to start upskilling yourself. And like Tushar mentioned, which I think is very valuable, understanding your goals, right? So thank you for the yeah. question, Muhammad. Um, Ashutosh, and do you have another question? Yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you so much for giving me the chance. <clears throat> yeah, am I audible? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, actually, uh, I'm a BTEC graduate in 2020, like two years uh, two years back. So, like, I, I've tried a lot to get to uh, enroll myself for the civil engineering jobs, but I didn't get I didn't get any chance to work with uh, as an site engineer or a quality engineer because maybe the uh, maybe due to uh, a recession in the industry. Like it's been two years, I'm not working anywhere. So I really want to uh, like uh, start as a BIM engineer. And it's, it is very difficult for me to like understand the things, how to get start myself and how to enroll. Is it possible for me to continue with all the syllabus because it's been two years to left with all the syllabus and like how, how would be the way to get into this? Yeah, you can go ahead to start. <laughs> I think uh, the thing is, it's the it's not about the time. It's just the two years that has passed. So the knowledge is always the knowledge. And I'll say we have learners in our previous courses. The, those who are, you will not imagine they are like 56, 57 year old people also. Those who are learning the course. that are yet upskilling themselves. So if it's not late yeah. for them, it's not late for you. It's just been two years. And those two years have passed because of pandemic. So you can start yeah. right now. You can start. And even if you apply for any course, you have to find a course which is structured in a way that starts from the basic, teach you the basics. When you get advanced in the basic, get to the intermediate level. When you get advanced in the intermediate level, then you advance or reach the stage where you say that you are a BIM expert now. So I think that is one of the biggest advantages of our course. Like we have divided it into so many stages 
so that you first learn you apply then you learn you apply then you learn and eventually when you are done with the course we put you in on an extensive project on which you work with other learners and explore how what have you learned you get the like reviews from bim managers or your mentors or and get a, get everything that you can from them and then apply it in like sort of a real project so that is one great aspect of it yeah um i think that like we mentioned before uh ashutosh um the main challenge that we have currently in the industry is the continuous upscaling right so um i mean i would i would understand that it was like too late if it was like 50 70 years ago but you're just a freshly graduate so you have every, all the time to to upskill yourself and it, you know take the opportunity of this so um there are multiple modules in the course that start from like the modeling aspect of it then we go on to learn to revit to, sorry to bim and then we go and learn about other tools like navisworks uh, etaps dynamo and others so I think there's a huge opportunity for you to start, uh, you know, delving into BIM. And uh, I'm pretty sure that you're well acquainted with technology already. So, I mean, why not, right? Do you have I think, any other questions, Ashutosh? Or go ahead, Tushar. Yeah, I think I was just reading some questions in chat. Let's just finish with Ashutosh and we'll see. <laughs> Excellent. So, did we respond to your question, Ashutosh? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was trying to unmute myself. <laughs> yeah, that that's what I really wanted to know that you have already mentioned all the uh, details. details. So uh, I'm a bit confused, still a bit confused about like, uh, it's been two years, like from where I should get my, start myself? Like uh, I need to learn AutoCAD first or Revit or what? Because I'm really uh, fresh in this. Uh, I don't have any idea about this, how to get to into it. So that's the reason. Well, I think that as long as you have like uh, knowing of construction itself, you're good to go. I mean, we really don't have yeah. like a, a prerequisites of software, stuff like that, because we learn everything from scratch. We don't go in and uh, like begin like an intermediate level or something like that. As long as you understand about construction and you are aware of how things are built, I think that's everything you need. Yeah, I think that's what it takes to be in industry. The softwares are just the tool. So you will learn the tools. But you have yeah. to have the basic knowledge of how to mold using those tools. And I think that you yes. already have. So you just need to just choose the tool. And just getting to your point, I have seen people, those who have not known AutoCAD, and they just know Revit and the processes and are still booming and working in industry. So is there something you have to choose one thing and you have to expert it? Perfect. So let's go with a question from the chat. Um, I think the last one is about how much salary you will get after knowing BIM. <laughs> so yeah. I'll say Vinayak is just, it. Uh, we cannot guarantee any average salary, but you will at least get 40 to 50% more than a usual architect gets in India or an engineer gets. Depending yeah. on which city you want to work, see, that, that aspect is really very <clears throat> subjective in a matter that if you want to work in Delhi, if you want to work in Mumbai, or if you want to work out of India, so it's really <laughs> a subjective yeah, matter. Really but different. I can say for surety that you will have a 40 to 50 or even at least 30-35% boom in what you're getting right now. Mm. Like that happened with me, so I can give you the surety that it will happen with you all. Yes. So uh, just to know everybody, because we have a, a couple of questions still, um, we will be getting in touch with you to answer these questions and to give you like hard data. But let's go with the last question that says, how BIM can help QS professional? Um, here, let me check. Who asked the question? Uh, uh, where is it? Where is it? Shivana, 
Can you open your mic, Shivana? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. So uh, a, can you elaborate on the QS professionals? Like who, who exactly do you refer the, to? Yeah, I'm working as a QS professional from past 40 years. How BEEP can help me to enhance my career? Uh, <laughs> I think I want to know what QS is, to be very honest. Okay. Yeah, you're, you're, like your quantity mic survey. cut off a little bit. Can you explain to us like what, what is your role? Is it quality or quality survey or something? Quantity. It's, just... it's a quantity. quantity. Uh, it's like a, a billing injury. Okay. Uh, I, so you want to... I think I'll... Go yeah, on. so Arath, I think I'll say that uh, as a quantity surveyor or a quality surveyor, whatever you said, or a building engineer, how BIM helps you is that other software or anything which you learn is just more about modeling, but this is more about getting data out of it. So imagine you have made a wall. And you want to get a quantity of the wall or quantity of brick out of it. You can just directly get it from your model. That is what it is. So you will learn how to make efficient schedules. Like imagine at some stage of your project, you, you want to just make all the walls 200 mm thick instead of making integer wall 100. So it will take a, you know, back and forth calculation if you're not working in BIM, but if it's a BIM related process, it will just be automatically get updated in your schedule. Like a room got increase in its size, the area will automatically get updated. The cost will automatically get updated. Yeah, yeah. And also another great thing about uh, BIM and BIM software is that um, you will be able to assess the quality of the construction even before it's built, because you will be able to run simulations. You'll be able to check for interferences between disciplines. So that will add to the quality of the product or the finished product. So, I mean, yeah, in general, I think it will help you greatly uh, for both quality and the quantity. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I would definitely recommend uh, checking into BIM and uh, learning more about it, right? Um, so, yeah, I think there's more people in the question, sorry, in the chat with questions. Um, for those that are raising their hand, please write your question down because in case we don't get to your question we are we going to reach out to you through email with uh the response to your question and also more information about the bim course all right so uh do you think we have time for more one one more question i think i think let's just take one last question and then we can mm -hmm. conclude all right uh-huh. Uh, 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 let me see the chats. Mm. KG, you have your hand raised. Can you open your mic? Yes, hi. Hello. Hello there. Yeah. So I'm an architect by profession, but I am into the design management function from client side. Where I need to control all the consultant and coordinate between them. So what kind of BIM, uh, like basic, advanced, which helping in my design management function? Okay, so I think I'll address this question first, then I'll take it off. So, uh, so you are basically, uh, from what I understood, is managing the consultants and managing the entire process of how the building is going to come up. Right. In terms of uh, how the structure is coming up, how the services are coming up. So, um, yeah. And from what I understood or the way you're saying, you've been doing it currently on CAD or some other software on which you have to manually coordinate everything. Am I right? You are absolutely right. So like at the say, just consider this. If you move to BIM, what will happen? You will have a MAP file coming from a consul MAP consultant. You will have a structural file coming from a structural consultant and you will have a Revit file or any, or architect file coming from an architectural consultant. Now, all of these three or four files will combine into one and 
there, like let's say you're using an Abyss work to combine all these files, what it will do for you, it will detect all the clashes automatically. Like whether your plumbing pipe going in your structure, so you can like coordinate with the structural engineer in a sense that these beams need to have sleeves because I cannot move these pipes. Or how are your beams or columns going in your shaft where you need the sleeves? How are your HVAC ducts are working? Where you need to bend them because of column, because of beam, and where your beams are coming in your corridor, how much you need to move them. Everything can be issued over BIM 360. Like you can create issues, you can tell those consultants, and as soon as those consultants resolve those issues, you get a notification that this issue has been resolved. So the process that you are manually documenting will become like say 10 times more efficient because everything will be digitized. Like in a sense, say, imagine you have 10 meetings to attend in a day and that schedule changes every day. And imagine you're writing those meetings on a dial. You will mess up your schedule. Like you will forget that this meeting is going to start at this time. But at the same time, imagine you start using Google calendars. What that will do for you, it will give you a notification 15 minutes before your meeting that this meeting is going to start, whether you want to join it or not. Even you can set it up in a way that if you are at this location, these meetings, you will not join. And if you are at this location, these meetings, you will join. So that's making the process efficient for you of attending the meeting. In a similar way, the BIM makes the process efficient for your buildings. Like the coordination becomes so fluent, so efficient that when, when you use it, you will get, you know, addicted to it. You don't want to not use it. Yeah. And also, uh, there's ways to keep uh, everybody involved in the project on loop. There's platforms that allow to do that. So, I mean, yeah, I think with BIM, uh, most of the professionals' uh, needs and requirements are uh, met because we are making use of technology. So, I mean, we can uh, use technology in malleable way, in a way that uh, works for us. So I think that it will definitely uh, improve your quality of work and the information that you manage as well. So yeah, I think we have reached the end of this webinar. I would like to thank everybody for their questions. And I will also remind them that uh, our experts will get in touch with you in case your question was uh, put in the chat because we don't want anybody to go unanswered. So yeah, thank you so much for everybody to join us today. Thank you Tushar for having the time to, to check in with us. Yeah. And uh, we'll see each other on the loop, all right? Yeah. See Thank you, you soon, Thank guys, you, and hopefully you have you, a Adam. great day. Thank you all. See you soon.